Hi, this is tax attorney Anthony Parent, uh, um, founder of IRS Medic uh, and partner here at Parent and Parent. And this video is going to explain your six options on how to settle uh, tax debt. Um, and uh, just to, so you're aware, um, implementing any one of these six or a combination of it is just part of the process. Um, this is step six of seven uh, that we use to get the best uh, resolution for our clients. So um, this is only an introduction. Uh, don't think that you can uh, know enough or set yourself up for the best deal with this, but hopefully just to, to explain how everything works and remove some of the myths. Um, now, this really works. People are still surprised that the IRS will accept less. And why? Why is that? And I think this uh, explains it all. Um, the IRS is not interested in putting people in on the street and they want you to be able to uh, make um, uh, your reasonable living expenses before they extract any money for you. So we think about this, we say, well, what happens if you have a lot of blood, meaning if you have a lot of money and you owe a lot of taxes? Well, guess what? You're going to pay your taxes in full. Um, there's just no way to settle your taxes um, to the IRS um, by saying, well, I'm going to pay you, pay, pay you in full. Give me a break. Um, the IRS is going to say no, because we have, uh, we're the most powerful collection agency in the world, and we can just seize it if we want anyway. So you're not going to get a break there. Uh, but if you do want, if you have the ability to pay and you want to dispute your liability to lower your taxes, you're more than welcome to do that. And that's what we do at our step three. Um, or if you wish to uh, attempt a penalty abatement, um, you could try that and paying your taxes in full will certainly help your case uh, when trying a penalty abatement. Um, your second option is, well, what if you have, uh, you can get a lot of blood, but you just don't have anything now, like you're, you have uh, assets worth something, or you're making a decent salary, uh, but just can't liquidate anything. Well, that option is going to be an installment agreement, and there's a few different types. There's streamlined, there's complex, um, there's five-year, now there's a uh, 72-month um, and that's where you're just paying the IRS back something each month. And, and you can imagine, though, some of these amounts people are paying back each month um, get into, you know, thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars $2,000, $3,000. And that's really a lot of money, no matter how much money you're making. Um, so it's very, it's very important that people be honest about their ability to repay the IRS, not just give a dollar figure uh, to get the IRS out of their lives. Because what, what if you really... Because uh, um, you got to make every payment... And you have to stay current, and that staying current part is the the part that the IRS uh, neglects to to say. Current means that you're going not going to run up a new liability, that you're paying your estimated taxes, um, or, or that your withholdings are correct. Because if you do, if you run up a new tax liability for say year 2012, um, while you're trying to repay the old one, guess what? You default any installment agreement with the IRS, and then they're just going to come back. Um, they're going to say that you're pyramided ta tax liabilities, and they're going to think you're a really bad person. And they're going to get really aggressive against you. So that's why it's really important that when you're negotiating an installment agreement, it's something you can actually afford, and you're just not doing out of fear. Um, and that's why there's something known as a partial payment installment agreement. And basically what this is, is you pay whatever is left over after your reasonable living expenses to the IRS. Uh, for example, uh, the IRS only allows a $400 a month uh, for car ownership costs, but if you can prove you need a larger, more expensive car, then you win. Like if you have a big family, you say, well, I have a big family, I can't get by with a regular car, I need, uh, this is what I need. Or if I have to work in this, t I have to live in this town that's more expensive because that's closer to my business. Um, those are those are examples of things that we've won in the past uh, that, that are realistic. Um, and again, we're not trying to get anything over on the IRS, we're just trying to, to ultimately resolve a case without an agreement being defaulted. Um, now what happens if you can't afford to pay anything um, that you're hurting so bad um, that, that you can't pay the IRS anything each month? Um, then there's something called CNC, that's currently non-collectible status, and if you really want to wow the people at IRS, call it status 53, that's a little insider code for it. Um, and uh, what it is, you'll pay $0 each month, just, just don't run up a new liability and uh, you'll be fine. So the question is, is well, that's great. Now this debt's just going to get bigger and bigger because each year the interest is going on. And that is correct. Um, if you're not... Um, if you're in a partial payment installment agreement or CNC, you could be increasing your tax debt each year. Um, so that doesn't seem like such a good thing, does it? Well, did you know the IRS only has 10 years to collect 
uh, on uh, a tax debt uh, from the date of assessment. And um, as you see, I have two asterisks in there, okay, because those are general rules, okay, 10 years from the date of assessment, that's not the, year, the tax year, but actually when the tax was filed and assessed. And also, there's many things that could uh, toll or stop that 10-year statute from running, um, such as filing a, a bankruptcy or submitting um, offers in compromise or being in appeals. And so, you want to be really careful that you have your 10-year period correctly to know when it's going to be over. Um, so, um, you can imagine that a, a partial payment installment agreement or currently not collectible status can result in a very small payment back to the IRS. Um, and if someone gets in the CNC, uh, they could end up settling their taxes for, for zero pennies on the dollar. Um, but the problem, right, the problem with that is it's going to take 10 years, right? And so, so a lot of people don't want to wait that long to kind of get this behind them. Um, and, you know, geez, if there was just one way to wrap up a tax debt, based upon collection potential, just to, to kind of get this out of your way while, while, while your financial situation is down, to get the IRS off your back and not have to deal with them again. Well, there is, and this is the Offer and Compromise Program. Um, this was misused by people for a long time, that uh, it's um, uh, by a lot of people who were filing ones where they weren't appropriate, and there's ways really to do it. Uh, but basically, you're settling with the IRS with uh, what they think um, they could squeeze out of you over the rema remaining uh, time to collect. Um, and really, an offer and compromise is something you should attempt on your own only if you are dead broke, and I mean dead broke. And even then, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, if you're making under $50,000 a year, it's possible. If you're really, really sharp, and it maybe if you worked as a uh, uh, a paralegal or something like that, you might be able to do it. Um, but otherwise, uh, we've just seen so many um, where people uh, wind up paying more than they can afford. Um, and I could go on uh, for, for on the offer and compromise, w w the secrets that we have. Uh, but really, it's the, the the biggest challenge. It's where we have our uh, we have our most fun doing it, um, and it's just exciting when we get every offer accepted. Um, but now here's one more thing. Sometimes the offer is not because you still have to pay something, and also you have to be good for five years and not run up a new debt. Otherwise, you'll default on it. So there's just one more option um, that a lot of uh, and I know a lot of the national tax resolution companies can't offer this because they're not attorneys, but bankruptcy is the sixth option. Chapter 7 bankruptcy can remove personal tax debts entirely. Okay, we've got two general rules. All your taxes have to be filed, and they've got to be pretty old, okay? Um, and there's a few other complicated rules, and there may be a mixture of some of the other uh, options to kind of get to the point where you can file bankruptcy. And for so, so many of our clients, they were contemplating bankruptcy anyway. Um, we've been able to uh, have them uh, hold off the IRS until they were at a point where they could just charge their debts thoroughly. Um, and so... In conclusion, um, there's a lot more to uh, to getting the best tax debt help. Okay, this is just again, this is just step six to seven. We have five steps that's going to set us up for this, and then our last step is going to appealing any decision uh, whether or not to appeal anything. So there's just a lot more to it, and because of that, uh, we've developed our own taxpayer uh, tax debt help settlement guide. Uh, you just go to irsmedic.com, tax debt help, um, and, um, and you can find it there. And if you wish to speak to us immediately, uh, call us at 888-477-4257 or e email info at irsmedic.com. Uh, I thank you for watching.